Make your snack. Build and test the Adafruit DC and stepper motor hat for Raspberry Pi with CircuitPython. Hello, bot builders. So our Raspberry Pi doesn't know how to communicate with our motors right out of the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an Adafruit DC and stepper motor hat for the Raspberry Pi. Now, there are lots of products that can do this. The Adafruit one is a really high quality product. We're going to assemble the motor hat. We're going to wire it up to the two DC motors that come with our mini round robot chassis kit. We'll give them a little bit of power. We'll write a little bit of Python code to test things out. And we should see both motors run in different directions. And at that point, we'll be ready to build our bot. Now the Adafruit DC motor hat does require us to do a little bit of soldering. So make sure that you've got a soldering iron, you've got some solder, and you know all of your safety tips. If you want to use a motor hat that doesn't require any soldering, there are options available. But the one I'm going to show you in another video doesn't allow us to take advantage of CircuitPython. So if you've got your tools, you know how to be safe, let's get bot building. Everybody should go to the web page for the Adafruit DC and stepper motor hat for Raspberry Pi. And the second click here is on assembly. So you can go through and see all of these different steps. Make sure that you're following them properly. I'm going to go through and show you some of these steps and some other ones that I've had to do in order to assemble my robot. Now this hat comes with standard size headers. Those headers will work fine, it's just that when you put them in, you can't stack another hat on top of this hat. So Adafruit actually recommends in the documentation, if you think that you might be adding to your project and need another hat, you can go ahead and buy these stacking headers. And so that's what I've done. They're very inexpensive. You need two rows of 20 pins. You can see that they're extra long. And if you're curious about comparison, here's a robot I built with the standard headers. And now here are our stacking headers. You can see those are longer and you can put stuff on top of it as well. Now we're gonna solder these on our motor hat. It's a little tough to align, so I use this tool here that's got a magnifying glass and then a stronger one inside. That's an especially important tool for me to have. I have vision so poor I can't drive. Adafruit's instructions recommend that you slide your hat onto the Raspberry Pi to give it some stability when you're soldering. The tricky thing is you can see here that it's a little bit wobbly. So there are a couple of ways we can remedy this. One is we can take three pieces of cardboard or so from the packaging of your product and just slide them in there like a little sandwich. And you can see that'll give us some good stability so our solder should be nice and flat and flush. You can also use these brass standoffs if you happen to have them. I do, so I'm gonna insert them right in here. There's a good tip in another Adafruit Robotics project, and that's if you don't have the brass standoffs, put a piece of electrical tape over your Raspberry Pi, just in case the hat touches the pie. You don't want a short to occur that could damage your boards. And now it's time to solder the two rows of 20 header pins onto the motor hat board. Soldering with the longer header pins can be a bit of a challenge, but also I'm old, I've got jittery hands, I've got bad eyesight, so I am not very good at soldering. But even somebody who's as poor at soldering as I am can still produce a working robot. Now hopefully everybody strives to be better at soldering than I do, and I would recommend the Adafruit Guide to Excellent Soldering. There are videos here as well as all kinds of other great tips. Check it out. Now we also need to put these block terminals onto our motor hat and solder them on so that we can wire up our motors. So we're gonna install this two screw block for power. And then we're also gonna install two five screw blocks for motors. Now we're only gonna use the one on the left for motor one and motor two since we've got a two wheel bot. Now when you poured out the contents of the motor hat bag, you probably noticed that there were five terminal blocks. Now you can make a five screw terminal simply by sliding together a two and a three. Face the wire holes the same way line up the sides and slide them together. As long as the wire holes are facing the same way, you should be able to slide them together with no problem. Next up, insert the terminal blocks into the holes in the motor hat board. The blocks are on the same side as the header pins and the wire holes are facing out. Once the blocks are in, hold them in place and flip the board over. You'll solder your blocks in on the opposite side where you soldered the header pins. Now if you have a battery pack that's got two jumper wires on it, you're in good shape. Unfortunately, the only one that I have right now has this DCA jack on it. Feel free to skip ahead in the video, but I thought this was a good chance for us to show how you can modify a battery pack like this to use in a robotics project, and it'll also give me a chance to show you how you can use a multimeter to test polarity. That's to identify which wire is positive or negative, even if they're not color-coded or there's no other indicator. So I'm going to snip off this jack and save it for another project. Then I'm going to spread apart these wires. I can see that there's no indication that one is red. I'm gonna strip the ends of the wires and then I'll put the batteries inside of this battery pack. I'm gonna need some power in the battery pack in order to test it. So put the cover on the battery pack and then take out your multimeter. And you wanna insert your red test lead into the right side, which is for regular batteries. The left side is typically for high voltage testing. 
put the black test lead into the center. And now eventually when I turn my multimeter on, I'm gonna turn it to this option just to the right that says DCV. DCV measures digital current voltage. Digital current is the kind of current that you'll find in batteries. Also notice the symbol up there, which is a flat straight line with a sort of dotted line underneath it above the V. That's as opposed to AC, which is alternating current. That's the stuff that you would find in an electrical outlet and it's wavy to show you that it alternates. So now flick the on switch on so there's power in your battery pack. Make sure you've turned your multimeter to DCV. And now I expect to be showing a positive voltage if my red test lead is touching the positive wire and the black test lead is touching the negative wire. And that's exactly what I'm seeing here. So I've got my negative test lead touching the top wire. The red or positive test lead is touching the bottom and my readout is a positive 6.43 volts. If I flip these over, I reverse the polarity and I should see, and I do see, a negative value that shows up here. So that means this lower wire is my red wire, it's my positive wire. So I'm just going to take a piece of red electrical tape and mark that. So now I'm going to shut off the power on my battery pack. And since my wires are a little short, what I'm going to do is solder on a little bit more wire with a male connecting end on the other end. And this is what the battery pack looks like with an extra four inches of wire soldered on the end. I've also used some heat shrink tubing in the area around the soldering connections to strengthen them. Now here are the two yellow motors that came with our bot kit. And while these work, I wanted to extend the wires a little. I thought it was just a bit tight around the connections. So what I did was I just added some extension wire in here. It's female on one end, male on the other. And again, it gives us about another four inches or so. Next up, loosen the screws in the terminal blocks. Now I'm gonna insert the motors as black, red in M1 and red, black in M2. And we can ignore the ground and that's going from left to right. Now there's a chance you might find when you power up that your motor is going in the opposite direction you expected it to. If that happens, then just flip the wires. Put the black one where the red one is and the red one where the black one is. And then the rightmost terminal, that's gonna be where we insert our power, red on the left, black on the right. And for each of these wires, the four motor wires and the two power wires, you're just gonna insert them one at a time and then screw the screw in and check them for tightness. So now we've got our motors and our power wired up. Turn on the Raspberry Pi, turn on the battery pack that powers the hat, Wait about 30 seconds for it to boot up, and then let's get into the terminal. So that's command space to pull up spotlight, type in terminal, press enter. With terminal up, let's SSH into our Raspberry Pi, log in. And now what we're going to need to do is to install a little bit more software, some software packages that are going to control our bot through Python. And we're also going to write a little sample Python code to test things out. Now I've actually put these together for you on a GitHub page. So if you go to github.com slash Gallagher, that's my last name, it looks like gallafer slash pybot, you'll see all of the code we're using in this project. Now most of the code that you see in here is going to be related to the iOS app that we're going to be building. But I want you to go down here to the one that says pybot.test.py and click on that. And then you see the one line that I've commented out right in here, which are, where it's a, a sudo pip3 install adafruit circuit python motor kit. I want you to copy that line. We're going to head back over to the terminal. We're going to paste it in and press enter. And what this is going to do is it's going to install the motor kit so that we can write Python code that allows us to control our DC motors. And I'll accelerate this install video. And when you finally get your prompt and you've installed, open your browser back up again. And we're gonna see the GitHub page where we've got the code that I've written. Now, uh, what I want you to do is to highlight the code and just the code, and then do a command C to copy it. Now we'll eventually paste this code into the Raspberry Pi, but let's talk through the code first so that we know what we've got here. This first statement, the from statement, imports the motor kit. So that's the library that will allow us to write Python code and manipulate the motors. The next line, kit equals motor kit, creates an object so that we can now use that to refer to our motors. We're going to need the time library as well, so we import time. Now this motor kit object that we created that we called kit, we can refer to both of our motors using dot notation. So by saying kit.motor1, we're referring to the first motor. Kit.motor2 refers to the second motor. And the dot throttle that we have after here says turn on that particular motor full speed. So 1.0 is full speed. Now, if we've turned on both motors using the throttle command, we need to figure out how long we want to run the motors for. So what I put down here is time.sleep, and the one inside says sleep for one second. So that means the code has to wait around for one second. Now, it's going to wait for one second while the motors run. Now, what we do after that one second is by saying kit.motor1.throttle0, and the same thing for motor2, what we do is we essentially shut off the motors. So we turn on the motors, full throttle, then we wait one second, then we turn the motors off 
off. And time sleep says, okay, keep them off for one second. So now let's scroll up a bit so we can see more of our code. And now that you know the pattern, you can probably figure out what the rest of this code is gonna do. Now in the next block, we set our motor one throttle to 0 0.5. But look down below, we set motor two's throttle to negative 0 0.5. Now what do you think that does? It runs the motor backwards at half speed. Then we say time sleep two. So what that's going to do is it's gonna run the motor while the program waits for two seconds. And then right underneath there, we set both throttles for motor one and motor two to zero. That's gonna stop things and we're gonna stop them for three seconds. So now we'll give ourselves a little bit more room to look at the third block of code here. And feel free to pause right here to challenge yourself and think through, hey, what's this next block of code gonna do? And then when you unpause, we'll talk through it together and unpaused. So the first two statements that we have here set motor one and motor two's throttle to negative 75. So if you know that the throttle sets the power behind the motor, a negative 75 should make the motors run backwards at three quarters power. Then the motors run while our program sleeps for two and a half seconds. And then after that time is up, we turn off the throttle on both of the motors, and then we put the program to sleep for one second. So we have a one second pause. Then we go down to the next line, and you can see we're gonna turn on the left motor, or motor one, at full speed, and we're gonna set the second motor to only one quarter speed backwards. And so what this should do is it should turn to the right. And now it's gonna do that turn for three seconds, and then we're gonna shut off the motors. And we don't have to wait after this because our program is done and our motors are shut off. You always wanna make sure that you've shut off your motors, otherwise your motors will keep running because you've never shut them off. So let's minimize your browser and let's get bot coding. So back in the terminal, let's create a program in nano. So we'll say nano space, and why don't we call it pybottest.py. We'll press enter, then do a command V to paste in all of the code that we copied from GitHub. And let's just uh, press the up arrow to, to make sure all of our code is in there. Once we've verified that, then we'll do a control X. We'll uh, make sure that we save the code and we're back at the prompt. So now how do we execute our code? We type in Python three, and then the name of the code that we want to execute, which is pybottest.py. Now you should probably put your motors flat on the table rather than holding them up like I am, but make sure that your Pi is on, your power is on, you got fresh batteries, everything is wired up. Then if you press enter in the terminal, your program will run and your motors will go. Full speed one second, one second wait. Forward, backward, half speed for two seconds, three second wait. Backward at three quarter speed for two and a half seconds. One second wait. Forward full speed, backward at a quarter speed for three seconds, and stop. Now one last thing, if you're an astute observer, you probably noticed that that motor that was set to go backwards at quarter speed didn't move. Well, these motors need about half power to be able to move. That's either half power in a positive or a negative direction. If you don't have that, the motor might not move. So just keep that in mind. But you should feel incredibly proud. You are a bot programmer. Let's go ahead and build that bot chassis, and then we'll write our app.